functions questions on the SAT are probably, in my experience, the questions that students have the most trouble with across the board. Uh, it's a topic that's introduced pretty much in Algebra 2, so it's not something you necessarily grow up learning like you do with a lot of the other topics that you learn in you know, elementary school, middle school, and then the early stages of high school. So it's a relatively new topic, and it can get confusing. But what I want to show you in this video is just the basics of functions, how we think about them, why we use them, and uh, what kinds of things they might ask you on the SAT. So first, what is a function? Well, generally the notation you will see is some letter, most often f, and then x. f of x, you'll often hear this called f of x. Um, but basically just saying a function of x. And you've got to think of a function as a machine. It's a way of translating some input into an output. Often for us, that input is an x, so some number x that we put in. And the output is often a y, or aka an f of x. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. So the thing to think about with functions, the reason why we use them is they're pretty much kind of like, they're pretty much machines. They're ways of getting some kind of output for some arbitrary input for any kind of number we put into that machine, for the most part, any kind of number. Now, what do we do um, with these functions? Well, you're not just going to see f of x. Well, actually, one thing I should say, well, no, I'll say this after when I do this part. So let's say we're told that f of x is x cubed. What does this mean? Well, it just means the machine that we're given is x cubed. So that means if we plug in a number for x, we're going to plug that into our machine and see what number we get out. So one thing to keep in mind as well is this symbol f of x, you might also see g of x, you know, h of x, r of x, really isn't, you know, any letter can go with it. It's no big deal. Also, you can have other variables in here. It doesn't have to necessarily be x. It can be theta or, or something else. Anyway. This is not two letters multiplied together. This is not the same as f times x, like two variables. You can't separate this. This is just one symbol. And in the next video, when we talk about um, function, like new uh, function, uh, what, what's the topic? Um, I'm blanking out. Uh, function notation, function symbol, symbolic functions. There we go. Uh, when we talk about that, you're going to see that this symbol really is, you know, arbitrary. We picked it because I guess the f is like function, but it's just a symbol in itself. It's like plus, it's like times, it's like subtract. Um, so we can't separate and we can't think of this as two letters multiplied together. All right, back here. So let's say if I wanted to know f of 1. So my input is 1 for x. Well, what I do is, okay, wherever I see an x in my machine, I replace it with my input. So this would just be 1, no problem. How about f of 2? Well, that's just going to be 2 cubed, which is going to be uh, 8. Uh, let's see, what else? How about something like f of negative 3? Well, that's just going to be negative 3 cubed, which equals minus 27. You get the point, right? How about f of a? Well, f of a, that's just going to be, again, follow the pattern. Wherever there is an a, an a or where there is an x, we're going to replace it with an a in our equation. So it's just going to be a cubed, which is a cubed. Uh, what about f of a minus 2? Again, wherever you see an x, replace it with an a minus 2. So this would just be a minus 2 cubed. And then we would expand this out even further. I'm not going to do that, though. So you get the idea here. Let's do another function just to make it a little clearer. Let's say g of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3x plus 2. What is g of 2? Well, that's just going to be 2 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 2. Just replacing the x with a 2. Just like I replaced the x with a 2 here, I'm going to do it the same thing here. And then you would obviously expand this out and you'd get some kind of number for it. What about g of smiley face? Well, g of smiley face would just be 2 smiley face squared plus 3 smiley face plus 2. Again, wherever I see an x, I just replace it with a smiley face. That's about it. So that's how we use uh, these functions when we have actual equations for them. Um, the important thing to realize is that there's a difference between this input so the number we put in and the output, the number we get out. Notice when I plugged in 2 for f of 2, f of 2 equaled 8. So I could also write this as just f of 2 equals 8. Over here, I have f of negative 3. That just equals negative 27. So I can write it like this. Where is this important? Because this is right now, this is the thing that gets people confused the most. So if functions confuse you, this may be what it is that's, that's throwing you off. Let's say I have some function h of x equals 2x plus 3.
let's say I ask you for h of 2. What is that going to equal? Well, that's just going to be 2 times 2 uh, plus 3, which is just 7. All right, no problem. What if I asked you, however, what is h? I said, if h of x equals 11, what is x equal? What would you do? Notice I'm not asking for h of 11. I'm asking for what is what is x when h of x equals 11. Well, what we do is let's just substitute h of x for what h of x is. Well, h of x is just 2, if we look up here, 2x plus 3. So I'm just going to say 2x plus 3 equals 11. And then I solve 2x equals 8, x equals 4. So when h of x equals 11 for this given h function, then our x is going to equal 4. By the way, we can also call h of x essentially a y. So this would correspond to the point, the coordinate, 4, 11. Now this is the big thing that's confusing. Let's look at one more example, h of 3. h of 3 in this case would be 2 times 3 plus uh, 3, which equals, let's see, that's 6, that's 9. If I asked you what is x when h of x equals 3, you don't put 3 in and get 9. You're looking for exactly this number that comes out. I mean, sorry, you're given this number that, that comes out. You're looking for the number to put in. So you, you have the output in this case. We need the input, and we're solving for that. So it's like we're solving this backwards. So then we say 2x plus 3 equals 3, 2x equals 0, x equals 0. So this case, x would equal 0, and this would correspond to the point 0, 3. This one up here would correspond to the point 3, 9. And that's pretty much the difference and the important thing here, there's a difference between the input and the output between what you put in and what comes out. Some other things that you should know, they don't come up very often at all in the SAT, but you should know them. Uh, the domain of a function is all the possible x values uh, that can work with the function. So let's say we had something like um, 1 over x minus 1 equals f of x. What is the domain of this function? Well, the domain is just going to have to be x equals 1. Uh, sorry, the domain is going to have to be, sorry, the reals, so all the numbers, except for x cannot equal 1. Why? Because if x were 1, then you'd have 1 over 0, and that goes to infinity. That's undefined. No good. So basically, the domain, for most cases, the domain is going to be every single number. Like in this one over here, the domain is any number. There are no restrictions. In this case, in some cases, limited cases, you're actually going to have a restricted domain. You can't have everything. So basically, the easiest question to ask if you're looking for the domain is, all right, what are the numbers that can't go in? Rather than asking the numbers that can go in, because often that's, you know, uh, all the time it's going to be pretty much infinite. But we want to ask, okay, what numbers can't go in? The range of a function, oh, ran out of room. Let me uh, get some more room here. The range of a function is all the possible y's. And for our purposes, generally, this is going to be the reals. It's going to be pretty much any single number. Um, so an example of 2x plus uh, 3 equals f of x. The range is, the domain is the reals, domain, and the range is the reals, because we can get any number. And if you looked at a graph of 2x plus 3, it probably looks something like this. We can see that you know this is going to extend forever. Any x can be represented on this graph, and any y can be represented on this graph. Um, in general, remember that f uh, domain and range questions don't really appear on this. It's a little bit beyond the scope of the test. It is something you should know just to be familiar with functions and to be familiar with what's going on. Actually, if you read the beginning of the um, instructions, they'll tell you that unless specified, all domains are the reals. Um, or all the real numbers, I should say. Uh, so the domain, it, as it says in number four of the instructions, unless otherwise specified, the domain of any function f is assumed to be the set of all real numbers x for which f of x is a real number. Um, yeah, so basically, um, it's pretty much the set of all real numbers uh, for which f of x is a real number. Pretty much, you know, uh, you know, if the domain, so again, with our 2x plus 3 example, uh, the domain would be the reals. In our 1 over x minus 1 example, the domain would be everything except for 1 because 1 over 0 is not in the reals, pretty much. Basically, you don't really have to worry about this at all because I don't really think I've ever seen a domain and range question on the test. But it is something that you should know just in case uh, it does come up and also so you understand functions better. Uh, let's see if there's one other thing I want to say about functions. I guess there's a couple of things I can say about functions. Um, 
how do these translate into graphs? Well, I might say something about this a little bit later, but if we have a graph, and let's say we're given a function 2x plus 3, which is f of x, I can come up with a table of x and y values, right? So let's plug in x is 0, that would give us 3. x is 1, that would give me 5, x is 2 would give me 7, negative 1 would give me 1, negative 2 would give me negative 1, and so on. I can go ahead and then graph these points, so 0, 3, oops, 1, 5, 2, 7, uh, negative 1, 1, negative 2, negative 1, and you can see I'm forming a line, right, and this is the graph of the function f of x, right, f of x equals 2x plus 3. Now again, if you're given a graph, like sometimes on certain problems you're given a table, you're given like something, I'm going to make up these numbers, they're probably not going to work, uh, but that's not really the point. Let's say you're given a table that looks like this, and let's say then your choice is A, B, C, D, E, you're given a bunch of equations. How do you solve this? Well, you see which one of these equations represents this function. You do that by plugging in your x into each one of the equations and seeing, okay, for A, when I plug in 0, does it equal 4? If it does, you keep it. If it doesn't, you cross it out. And you do that, and you're probably going to get down to, you know, two choices. If you have to, plug in another one uh, and see which one works. That's pretty much how you work with these functions on um, these tables. As for the charts, let's say we're dealing with a function like this, so a parabola. And I ask you for, let's just put in some numbers here. One, two, something like that. One, two. Okay. I ask you for f of, oops, f of 2. Well, that's just going to be the function evaluated at x equals 2. So it would be something like that. So it would be equal to 2. What if I asked you for f of 0? Well, that's just going to equal whatever the function is at 0, and it's about 0 here. What if I asked you for f of x equals 1, what is x equal? Remember, the, there's a difference between the input and the output. So here, I looked at what the x value was. Here, I'm going to say, okay, the y value or the f of x value, the value of the function is 1. What is the x that corresponds with it? So here's y equals 1. So it, no, that's pretty bad. That's y equals 1. What can it equal? Well, it can either equal x equals 2. <laughs> Terrible picture. We get the idea here, right? You say, okay. Or it could equal x equals um, negative 2, right? Because you draw up, you say, okay, here is where the function equals 1. What is the x value associated with it? And I know these are inconsistent. It's just the picture is very sketchy. But I hope you get the idea where there's a difference between looking at what the y value is of the function given an x that we've picked versus picking a y value on the graph and then figuring out what x corresponds to it. Let me think if there's anything else I want to mention. I know I'm going through this quickly. Um, well, there'll be a lot of other practice problems that should talk about this a little bit later. But I just want to give you the broad range of the kinds of things you'll see on the SAT. I think that's pretty much it. I think I've covered pretty much all the bases on functions. Um, if you have any questions, if there's anything that you don't get, please let me know in the comments for this video because this is a very important topic. Uh, you can also check out the other videos I'm making on practice problems, on specific ones you might see on the SAT that might uh, give you some trouble.